In this video, we're going to discuss reagents and reaction conditions that convert primary alcohols to aldehydes and stop avoiding conversion of the aldehyde all the way to the carboxylic acid. These are so-called weakly oxidizing conditions or weak oxidizers, as I like to call them. And stopping at the aldehyde stage can be nice. For example, if we want to synthesize a product that has the carbonyl carbon in that oxidation level, we need to stop there. And if we want to add certain types of nucleophiles into the carbonyl carbon, it's important that we stop at the aldehyde stage and avoid going all the way to a carboxylic acid or a carboxylic acid derivative. All right, so how do we think about accomplishing this? Well, a interesting and useful solution is to think about using a chromium reagent that is much milder as an acid, Lewis and Bronsted acid, than chromic acid itself. And this is the logic behind pyridinium chlorochromate. This is a weak oxidizer. It only converts primary alcohols to aldehydes. It stops at the aldehyde stage. And this is the structure of the reagent. And it can be generated by treating chromic acid with pyridinium chloride, funnily enough. And uh, this is the product that we get. And it's a weak oxidizer. And that's pretty much all we need to know about it. PCC is typically used in dichloromethane solution. So these are pretty typical reaction conditions that you'll see. And the product is an aldehyde. Notice we've gone from the primary alcohol starting material to an aldehyde product. And so this is a weaker acid. And because it's a weaker acid, it cannot engage with the aldehyde product to do further oxidations, which is great. Now the second set of conditions are rather complicated looking, but also highly instructive in terms of mechanistic understanding, helping us develop some mechanistic intuition for how oxidation reactions should work. And it's known as the Swern oxidation. The Swern oxidation uses dimethyl sulfoxide, which you'll universally see abbreviated as DMSO. This is a Lewis structure for DMSO, and it gets involved in the mechanism right away. So we're going to use it um, in the very near future. And then oxalyl chloride. We'll look at a Lewis structure for this in a second, but it's often abbreviated COCl2. It's two acyl chlorides linked through their carbonyl carbons, a pretty electrophilic molecule when you think about it with those two highly electrophilic carbonyl carbons right next to each other. After treatment with those conditions, we add a base, typically an amine base like triethylamine, and the resulting product is the aldehyde along with some byproducts that we'll see as we walk through the mechanism. So let's now walk through the mechanism of the Swern oxidation. And this is a specific example of a more general class of oxidations that actually use DMSO strategically. And we'll see why DMSO in particular is, is so interesting and, and nice for these kinds of oxidations when we get to this key reactive intermediate that contains a good leaving group linked to the alcohol oxygen. So in the first stage of the mechanism, we're generating the active electrophile that's actually going to engage with the alcohol. And this happens via addition of DMSO's oxygen to oxalyl chloride, and then a fragmentation um, that leads to this intermediate. Now this kicks off a chloride, and chloride can add in at the electrophilic sulfur atom in what is essentially an SN2 process at sulfur, SN2 displacement at sulfur, where this whole bit departs as a leaving group. This generates a chlorosulfonium species right here, and this is where the alcohol enters the picture. The alcohol is nucleophilic at the hydroxyl oxygen and can displace that chloride, and we end up with a sulfonium, after loss of a, a proton, we end up with an alkoxy sulfonium intermediate. So sulfonium because it's positively charged at sulfur, and alkoxy because of this alkoxy group right here derived from the alcohol, and I'm using a primary alcohol in this case just to illustrate the mechanism. All right, now what happens? Well, the thing to notice now is we have an atom with positive charge directly linked to the hydroxyl oxygen or the, the former alcohol oxygen. So we've got something that looks like a pretty good leaving group in the appropriate position to be eliminated along with one of these protons to establish a CO double bond. The actual mechanism of the Swern oxidation is a little more complicated than just an E2 elimination at this stage though. What happens first is actually deprotonation at one of these methyl groups um, attached to the sulfur atom. And this was proven using some pretty elegant deuterium labeling studies where they found deuterium um, 
that was here incorporated into the dimethyl sulfide byproduct of the reaction, which was pretty neat. We'll see how that comes about here in a second. So that proton transfer generates a species like this with negative charge on a carbon adjacent to positive charge on a hetero atom. These two atoms are linked. This is known as an ILID, ILID intermediate. And we'll have more to say about ILIDs when we talk about the Wittig reaction in the near future. All right, what happens now? Well, that negatively charged carbon is actually quite basic, and at this point, it can pick off that proton that needs to be eliminated to establish the CO double bond. Now E2 elimination occurs, and we end up with the aldehyde product and the dimethyl sulfide byproduct. And notice this is the leaving group that we noticed way back at this step before the illid was formed. And so the net result really is the elimination of dimethyl sulfide uh, and, a, and a proton from this reactive intermediate right here to give the aldehyde product. And again, this mechanism, as funky as it looks, was proven by using an alcohol with deuteriums right here. And what was found was that deuterium ended up incorporated into the dimethyl sulfide. And so they knew that one of those methyl carbons, the dimethyl sulfide, had to be plucking a proton off of this carbon linked to the hydroxyl group in the alcohol. So this is the Swern oxidation. It's a bit more complicated to write down and think through than PCC, but it accomplishes the same transformation as PCC, the conversion of a primary alcohol into an aldehyde. And it stops at the aldehyde stage because the aldehyde actually does not have the ability to engage with the chlorosulfonium in this way and eliminate to produce a carboxylic acid. Finally, I want to talk about one more set of reaction conditions for weak oxidation of a primary alcohol to an aldehyde, desmartin pyridinane, or DMP. And this, like PCC, is used in di uh, dichloromethane solution quite frequently and converts primary alcohols into aldehydes selectively. So desmartin pyridinane has a very bizarre structure that looks like this. And... We can think of that iodine as being in the plus three oxidation state. If you work through the electronegativity math here and do the math on oxidation state, that's iodine plus three, according to our formalism. That's a pretty electrophilic iodine, right? I mean, iodine wants to be in the plus one oxidation state or negative one oxidation state um, is, is typical for iodine, right, as a halogen. So the first thing that happens here is loss of one of these acetates and replacement with the reactive alcohol, um, re replacement with the, the primary alcohol substrate, the reactant. And we can see that showing up right here in this reactive intermediate. And the interesting thing about DMP is these acetate ligands, quote unquote, on the iodine are well positioned to deprotonate at that key position that we need to deprotonate at in order to eliminate and establish the CO double bond. And that's what happens next. This deprotonation causes kind of a cyclo-elimination of the aldehyde product with loss of acetic acid. And the byproduct has iodine in a lower oxidation state. And this kind of electron flow suggests that. And if we do the oxidation state math at the iodine now, now it's in the plus one oxidation state. So indeed, the iodine has been reduced and the alcohol oxidized. And similar to the previous two uh, conditions we've looked at, this stops at the aldehyde stage because the aldehyde is now unable to displace an acetate, for example, from DMP and won't engage with this reduced product at all. Last but not least, what I'll say is for the purpose of synthesis, for the purpose of making molecules in this course, all three of these weak oxidation conditions are pretty much interchangeable for converting a primary alcohol into an aldehyde. So you can pick your favorite. If you want to just write DMP and CH2Cl2 above the arrow, go for it. If you'd rather write PCC instead of DMP, completely fine. If you want to commit the sworn conditions to memory, because, hey, it's a really cool reaction, and it is, you're more than welcome. So any of these three conditions can be used to convert primary alcohols into aldehydes.